The December 8th, 1992 school board meeting is called to order. First item on our agenda, agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, may I ask that item 6D be deleted from tonight's agenda, please? So under um, school board committees and reports, town center committee report is deleted. Any other adjustments? <coughs> Seeing none, we move on to approval of the school board minutes of the meeting of November 10th, 1992. Um, Rosemary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, I did uh, ask the secretary to change um, some of the names in the high school representative report. Do you like the specific changes? It was the Linda Hall or Mind Mindy Hall? Yes. Yeah, Hall. And the, and the uh, reporter was Courtney Minden. And Mindy Hall was not present. Correct. Okay. And under item 7C, I believe it was Jan Solon who explained the process concerning the main, uh, middle school building project committee. And also under that same um, item 7C, the last sentence, I think you can drop the D and served. Any other changes? The minutes stand. We now move on to comments by our high school representatives. <coughs> they would come forward, please. Good evening. Um, first off, I'd like to start with telling you some news that's, um, that's been happening in the SAC. Um, we're very pleased that we've had, we've been very welcomed by the administration um, at their faculty meetings and their subcommittee meetings. And um, at the faculty meetings that, we, that the policy committee of the SAC has attended, we've listened to um, discussion and debate on the Coalition for Essential Schools, which has been very interesting. Um, also, members of the policy committee are now permanent members of the faculty subcommittees that deal with the extended period uh, transitions. And um, we've listened to concerns that the faculty has and, and they've listened to concerns that the students have had. And this has enabled, enabled more communication and a lot better feelings all around than there were last year. Um, I think that the SAC chairperson, uh, Laura Don, should be commended for um, enabling us to get all the student involvement, student faculty interaction, and that's a big step because in past years I don't think there's been as much and it's just opened up the lines of communication and that's really great for both parties. Okay, and um, th December's usually the time where uh, most seniors are either getting ready for college or uh, waiting to hear from college, colleges, and um, this year where there are usually 10 to 15 seniors who um, go early decision. This year, this, for this senior class, there are uh, over 35 seniors w awaiting a decision that will come around next week. Um, also, I, I spoke last month about Joanna Johnson doing a needy, needy um, family project. Well, she's on to about three more needy, needy children projects, including the Bruce Roberts Fund um, and two, two um, programs for children and involving giving them holiday parties. She's still working out the details, but just thought I'd let you know that she's st still hard at work. Um, December 1st was both AIDS Awareness Day and um, SAD Awareness Day, where most of the student body wore purple ribbons to um, commemorate AIDS awareness and students against drunk driving. And lastly, um, the talent show that was held about two weeks ago was very successful, and the senior class got around $3,000 for it. Yes. Uh, I believe it was last month that you discussed um, the seniors getting, uh, going off campus during free periods and that mm -hmm. that was a discussion mm -hmm. at the high school. What's, what's happened with that? Um, we've kind of put it on hold for, for a little while, speaking that most of the student interest was going into May projects and um, we, were, we didn't see as much faculty approval as we hoped. Um, it's tabled for now, but we, we still might look into it. Just a question of uh, Mindy. Do you think 
Lori's efforts will continue. I believe she's a senior this year, mm -hmm. right? Definitely, because she set a great example and she's talked with um, the junior class president, Ben Berman, about continuing this. And it's really, I don't know, I feel it's a precedent because I've never, I've never seen as much student interaction as we have, we've had this year. I, I think it's really important to yeah. involve all students, parents, and teachers in any kind of discussion and changes and things, and I commend you for it. Thank you very much, both Mindy and Courtney. I believe due to illness and other commitments that we do not have middle school representatives here, so we will pass. We missed their report. We now move on to communications and a report on the school board language arts workshop, which was recently held. Uh, yes, I guess we ought to know, however, that we do have a number of middle school students here. They're covering us as part of a social studies class, so I think it's soon that you're not... You're high school. If, if you, pardon me? <laughs> high school. Well, there are high school students, okay. <laughs> Oops, there is. Fortunately, that wasn't carried. Um, the, uh, what I'd like to do, because it's, it was sort of arbitrarily divided here between communications and superintendent's report, if you have no uh, objections, I'll just sort of blend one into the other because they really basically are the same kind of thing. I don't have a separate report uh, or a communication, written communication on the language arts uh, workshop. Uh, it is part, at this time of year, the school board um, and administration do try to um, uh, cover or at least have a variety of reports on curriculum <coughs> issues and there's a very deliberate plan in that beginning in uh, January and February administratively uh, certainly my office looks a lot at the total budget issues and beginning in March the board looks at a proposed budget for next year uh, so that actually it is the time between September and um, at least January that we have an opportunity to review decisions that were made in last year's budget and that's why the workshops at the beginning of the year uh, right through uh, this time of year and usually into January as well are trying to assess decisions that have been made or how are we doing with problems that we identified last year so so far we have uh, we had a fall or a September workshop uh, on the high school um, with faculty reporting on their interest in joining or at least exploring the coalition of essential schools we have had a workshop on uh, math which uh, in a limited way admittedly but as best we could cover um, some of the changes going on in math k-12 and uh, this past week we had a similar kind of workshop on language arts it is a frustration for us because of the um, broad scope of what has to be covered and in even if we spend two and a half to three hours uh, in these workshops we clearly do not cover everything but we are doing this in the um, interest of trying to report back to analyze to uh, get a handle on how did the decisions we made last year or the identification of issues last year what are we doing about it this year uh, we don't get much of uh, a public uh, participation at those workshops unless in fact they are uh, workshops that um, are controversial and uh, I just you know sometimes we we do put them uh, through tape on uh, on TV but many times uh, we just want to make sure that the public is aware that we're doing that uh, public is very welcome to come to these workshops uh, and in fact if you want to stop by and ask questions we'd be happy to summarize it the one of the focuses of our language arts workshop is to look at those strands that do start with uh, the elementary program and go right up through the system we looked uh, for instance at research papers uh, certainly various kinds of writing uh, we, be we are beginning a conversation on grammar which I think is one of those things that uh, we'll tell you more about later as we pull that together um, and of course we were reviewing some of our reading um, discussions that we had last year Anybody care to add to that? I think they've been very positive workshops from, from my point of view as a board member from workshops we've had in the past and it seemed nice for a change to focus on some curriculum issues and curriculum topics which we haven't been able to do in the last couple of years and it seemed very nice. Well we certainly, I also uh, want to take this opportunity to thank the administration and the teachers um, who worked on, the, on putting together packets of information. We didn't always get a chance to hear from everybody and 
in depth because of the attempt to cover a lot, but we have looked at the materials um, and we appreciate the effort that goes into putting those things together. Moving on, a second workshop that has occurred, we've been busy with, with meetings, uh, some of them in subcommittee work and some of them uh, which are all touched upon here. But uh, last um, week we held another workshop uh, at the high school and actually that was not so much sponsored by the board as it was sponsored by the high school, but it was certainly attended by the board and myself. And that was an attempt to, to um, uh, invite parents to ask questions and to try to be part of a, a question and answer session on why would the high school be interested in becoming a member school of the Coalition of Essential Schools. Personally, I thought that the parents who were there asked some very good questions um, and that there was a good deal of, I think, productive interchange. Um, I, I think it also became clear to me that we need an extensive uh, reaching out to community, especially to parents, uh, whenever we're thinking about uh, something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. It's very hard, even in one evening, um, to get at the heart of the matter. We had difficulty, for instance, trying to explain that the Coalition of Essential Schools is not a package program. It's not like adopting a textbook series or adopting a particular way of teaching. Um, and I think that in all fairness to everybody, uh, we need to keep on doing these things. Sometimes uh, we, we were talking about what kinds of forms can we promote that uh, we can invite parents to, um, to come to that are not too time consuming because we realize everybody's busy. How do we get teachers and parents to uh, really explain things back and forth? So uh, I felt it was a step in the right direction. My own feeling I left uh, with the impression that we need to do a lot more of that kind of thing because I think the, some of the issues are so complicated it's very difficult to get them clearly established in the course of one evening. Thank you. I have one other communication to, to add to the communications agenda. Just a reminder that on thir this Thursday, December 10th at 7.30, we have been invited by the town council to join a workshop um, which will include our newly elected state senator, Jane Amaro, um, our representative, Steve Simons, and our newly elected county commissioner, Lyle Kramer. If, if at all possible, the board is invited to attend. We will now move on to school board subcommittees and reports. And the first is our finance subcommittee and our chairman, Rosemary Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the finance committee uh, meeting held uh, immediately preceding this meeting, uh, we received the financial statements submitted to us by the business manager. Uh, on them, uh, we have 42.55% of our revenues uh, so far accounted for this year and 42.50% expended. The details of the Finance Committee meeting uh, include a, included a review of the bus data, including how many buses we have, the mileage, the inventory, and also an update on Bus 7, which I know many of the students have missed, and it's still not back. Uh, we reviewed a proposal which deals with handling um, hazardous chemicals in the pool area and a report uh, from the Northern General Services on what to do about that. We reviewed special education costs, uh, including those which are not presently in the 1992-93 budget. We reviewed the activity stipend schedules for 1992 and 93. And there may be uh, recommendations coming to the full board next month on that. We reviewed um, the investment of the high school sh scholarship funds, and we'll have a recommendation on that. And we also uh, discussed, however briefly, uh, and we'll bring up for full board discussion, the possible uh, addition of equipment fee charges for participants in the use of athletic equipment. And that's the end of my report. Any comment? Thank you. We now move on to the policy subcommittee and our <coughs> chairman, Loretta. Hall. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, the policy subcommittee met on December the 3rd in Dr. Goldman's office, and we reviewed 
some of the, uh, the policies that we addressed the month before and uh, reached a decision that the substitute pay policy is, is certainly in line with other communities and, and uh, felt that it was uh, acceptable for the continuation of, of this school year. The fundraisers project uh, using uh, uh, different businesses in the surrounding area for fundraisers with the different classes was discussed again and we have decided that this is perfectly fine and should be allowed to continue throughout this school year at least and that we will review the policy during the summer so the classes that have made plans to, to use Burger King or mobile or whatever for their money that that seems to be working quite well uh, we had been asked about a policy of loaning our textbooks to students that are attending private schools and we checked with other area communities and, and made the decision that that really is not possible for us to do. We will loan school books for homeschooling only and not for, for private schools. We will be reviewing in a few minutes uh, a, a hazardous communication policy uh, has, uh, for hazardous substances and, and how we, we handle that and that will be on our new business for this evening. And our next meeting will be on Wednesday, January the 6th. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we now move on to our middle school building committee and Ann Chapman will comment on that. Uh, the middle school building committee had its first meeting on November 19th and Charlie also attended that from the school board and Connie took excellent notes. I hope she continues to do that. She does a better <laughs> job than the rest of us would. Um, we basically just went over the school space study report and brought um, <coughs> members of the committee who, uh, up to speed, who hadn't been on the previous committee. And we decided um, that rather than uh, just go ahead with the architect we have now, we're going to open up the interview process again um, uh, for this next phase of developing a, a building design or a renovation design. And I believe ads have been running the last week and a half or so. Uh, to be closed December 15th and we we may actually have some to review at our next meeting which will be December 17th and uh, last weekend we took a tour with the committee um, and Nancy Hutton and the maintenance director uh, of the middle school in Pond Cove so the committee members could see the state of the buildings in addition I um, as part of the advertising for uh, interview process um, offered an opportunity to those uh, architectural firms, AE firms that uh, so wished to walk through the building and I felt like Mother Goose with the goslings. We must have had 20 people there. Um, it is, I think, important for the community to understand this process. Uh, we have some very serious, serious problems at the middle school. Um, and the, we have talked about these over the, certainly the last year. Uh, we had a focus, however, last year on the decision we had to make for space purposes, who would go to the high school, we made that decision for the kindergarten, went through a uh, small renovation project to facilitate that. But I just want to make sure that every opportunity we have, we can alert the community that uh, we have massive building problems, um, renovation problems at the middle school um, with uh, similar but not quite so uh, widespread problems at Pond Cove. And this building committee, which came together um, a couple of weeks ago and that we'll be meeting, uh, is, I think, going to be facing a lot of very difficult and uh, but very important decisions. Uh, we'll be hearing a lot more about this project. Any comments? Rosemary. Uh, yes, I've been approached by several um, taxpayers who have no children in the schools who are very interested in um, supporting this project if they know the full scope and I remember when I was on the town council and we were deciding whether or not to ask for taxpayer assistance in the new public works garage that the uh, councilor Pearson went around and took a videotape which ran on channel 38 and there are people who might find that that is a, a good use of their time to watch a 45-minute video 
there's plenty of time now that the field hockey season is over uh, to run tapes uh, on Channel 38. And uh, um, I know the basketball games and some of the other games will be on, but I mean, that's certainly school related. And I'm sure people, you know, are using 38 as a way to find out. Just thought I'd add that. Also, as soon as there's a, a schedule ready and if we know whether or not taxpayers will be asked to vote on this in May, will, will there be some sort of a, an announcement? <coughs> that really is the question I'm asked. Well, how soon do we get to vote on this? So. I, I really seriously doubt that we will be ready for a May re referendum. Uh, just the process of going back out to look at, at, at architects for the conceptual design is putting it up behind <coughs> about two months. And in order to meet the, the town council's deadline of, I believe, March, in order for it to get onto their agenda, uh, I, I, I see it very infeasible <coughs> that we would meet that deadline. So I think we're looking more towards a November. And we should be hearing sometime, sometime this month on our special needs for the Pond Cove, correct? Yeah, the <clears throat> expect to hear from the state. Well, they said December, but I wouldn't be astonished if it was January. But they'll be fairly close to that to give us some sense of how competitive we are in that um, application. Uh, we're, what we're headed for is what is popularly known as concept design. Uh, we have long since established the need for renovation and the need for um, from many kinds of uh, points of view, including, uh, I think, uh, just a, 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 a suitable workspace for students and teachers, uh, but building design, uh, program space, and uh, so forth, so that uh, we're really, I think things will move fairly quickly. I mean, it, of course, that, that means that it's still a snail space, but um, because when you get into building projects, it seems like it takes forever. Um, however, we'll have a lot more to say about that. Uh, we do have the deadline coming up. We will be reviewing those applications. We will be moving, I'm sure. Um, we'll be establishing on the 17th the timeline for how we will, by what time we expect to make that decision. And once somebody's, um, that, that piece is determined, then we're really asking uh, uh, architects to go into concept design. And that means talking to students. It means talking to uh, staff, um, board, obviously for uh, what kind of program do we want for middle school? Um, what are the implications for use of space? Uh, I think people should be, uh, we definitely need a, a community information um, overview, which I think that sounds like a wonderful idea to me. <laughs> um, lots of places we can show. Um, we can dramatize some, uh, again, I, the, uh, at the middle school level we have teachers who have to go to extraordinary efforts to pull together the kind of material it takes. I think mean, this is particularly noticeable in science, but it isn't just, just in science, in order to do what a better working space, um, a better school program kind of thing would, would facilitate. I think it's important for people also, uh, and this will certainly be part of the building committee's job, uh, as well as I'm sure interested staff, to go see what there is in this area. In the last 10 years, there's been a good deal of activity in building. Um, and certainly all the, um, or at least most of the architects who will be uh, uh, interviewed have buildings that they have planned and designed and built in the area. And I think that many of our staff um, should be encouraged to uh, go see that as well as uh, members of the school board. If you happen to do, uh, you know, know somebody, you know, then we'll be happy to set up some, some tours or some contacts. Uh, this is the time to get, everybody should be thinking about what's a building you want for the next generation. This generation admittedly, but also a building that will actually serve educational purposes well for the un upcoming generations. That's a, that's the shape of the task. Um, so it's kind of exciting, it's a lot of work, and ultimately, yes, it is going to cost. There's no getting around that. But um, it will be, uh, I think people will find that it really frees up our thinking about a lot of possibilities. It definitely will be tied to what kind of program do we want, what vision do we have for our school. Any other comments? All right. It, is there any place on here that we're going to talk about the coalition other than after Connie's report? Because it sort of moved on and I have a few things I wanted to ask. We can, go, can we, revisit we, we can revisit at this point. Would you mind? Under, no. Okay, we'll go back to the Coalition of Essential Schools. Um, the people that I talked to the other night as we were leaving and then a few calls seemed to be 
as confused as they were enlightened. And, and we had several questions, I think about 20 questions to cover, and we got to about five of them. And so I'm hoping there's going to be other times for discussion about the coalition before we're asked to make a decision. Uh, are there any plans that you know of to do that? Or does I Frank have any plans? But I think we've got a lot, a lot more discussing to do. Yeah, I have uh, explored with community service a date in mid-January for another for another evening, and we're looking at uh, Thursday, I believe it's the 14th, or Wednesday the 20th, and I simply have to check with some of the high school faculty. But uh, and then I, I see that in that we may be talking also about a board workshop the same month on the same topic. I'm I'm not sure of that, but I see some evidence of that in the, our agenda. So. Certainly in mid-January, we'll do at least one more meeting, but we can hold more if we need to. What deadline are you looking toward of a decision being made? Well, I, I think as a faculty, we would like to resolve this by the end of January at the latest. Um, I think we had planned to uh, approach the board at the February meeting, which is the 8th, 9th, what? Data set. Yeah. We we those dates are set for our just so that we can proceed on some other work we have in progress. We can defer uh, talking about it at the board level for a month or two months. I mean, there's there is nothing magic about February. All right. So that we can be as flexible as we need to be. And I think we, we want to make sure that we've had sufficient discussion in the community before we, before we make that step. So we will look again at that and perhaps revise our timetable. What we had initially been shooting for February. Are you still looking at scheduling? Has that been an yes. ongoing process? Yes. That's the second piece we want to move. We are in process with that too, but we wanted to start to focus on that in February and March because we really need to make a decision on that by April at the very latest, the April board meeting at the very latest. We, we would like to resolve that from our point of view in, in March, um, which is when we get the data back and so on and so forth. And we are, we have all the subcommittees meeting on that issue as well. And in the spring we're starting our, our evaluation process with the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. So we sort of see ourselves as um, well scheduled between now and the end of school year. Ann. May I just ask that um, if, if you do do this follow-up informational meeting that a notice be sent home to the middle school and elementary school parents because I they truly are going to be affected by whatever right. this decision is and I know I've told this many as I can get to but you know that that right. isn't necessarily I, that I, many. I, uh, um, I and have that on the list to do. Exactly. Okay, because uh, along with it, instead of just sending a notice saying coalition meeting, because a lot of people still don't know what that is, if on the back of it or something there could be the ten principles so people know. That that seems to galvanize people. Yeah, I, I, I thought that the, the, the handout that has both sort of some straightforward information and on one side and the coalition and the other would be something that would be useful to send home in both schools. And I have, have it down to to check with the schools and see when their newsletter is. And if, if that's not going to be happening, um, we will s just send it out by mail and okay. just get a letter out. I, I think it would be well worth it because I think there, there are a lot of people who would like to have input and they're still relatively unaware. Um, so that would be great. Good. Also, do, do we have copies in our libraries of Horses Compromise and Shopping Mall High School? I know there are people that have requested I have three I com returned my I copies <laughs> I want to state that right now I have asked for people who have borrowed copies of Horace's compromise and Horace's school to return them and I have several copies of Horace's school I think I have three of them and and one of Horace's compromise but we can also buy more of those um, I do not know what's in the libraries I know the high school has had about five copies of each and so I still have two uh, I have several out outstanding copies, and I will keep pushing for those. We, we are going to publish in the Courier a, a, a brief bibliography um, on the coalition, and there really is not a lot. There are articles from time to time in newspapers, 
Uh, I, I seem to have a lot of them from 1987, but they're so much out of date. That is, that the coalition has generated, they generate a lot of press in 87, but there's not been a lot of recent press except for the Wall Street Journal earlier this fall, other than those books, which are quite good books and I think probably do the best job of giving a, a pretty full discussion, but there's nothing short and quick that's, there's, there's no quick fix here, it's quite easy. I think Anne's right, the common principles give the flavor of the philosophy better than almost anything else. Well, Horace's uh, compromise is fairly short, actually. My recollection in the shopping yes. mall is a little longer, but Shop neither one of them are. I, I don't want you to scare people off. They're not weighty tomes. Now, I think Horace's compromise is very readable and, and very interesting. Any other comments? Are we going to talk about a possible workshop? It's set one of our end. agenda to okay. set. Else. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now move on to unfinished business, and the first is a discussion and action as needed on the custodial transportation reorganization update. And I will, I guess, yield to the superintendent first. Um, I have been talking about this now in pieces for a number of months. First, we talked about trying to reorganize um, some of our bus routes. We talked about uh, meetings that we've had where we've tried to incorporate some total quality management principles. Uh, we've talked about a functional analysis of how we get certain tasks done. Uh, we've discussed the fact that uh, Sue Weatherby is using her expertise at scheduling to help us um, assign um, week to week schedules for both custodians and to the degree needed for um, transportation. Uh, we've now reached a point where we're looking at some of the supervisory functions. And uh, in the packet, I gave, uh, put a memo, a memo that's a follow-up to the finance subcommittee meeting that we had, which again, in turn, was a follow-up to an item we had last month. Uh, two items uh, to be taken up tonight, and one is establishing a stipend for a position that we haven't had in the past, although it doesn't require a new person. It's simply taking one of our custodial pe people in um, uh, asking him to fulfill the duties of a head custodian second shift. Uh, we've had uh, an opportunity in subcommittee to discuss that in, in uh, considerable detail. If any of the members of the school board want to ask questions about that, what's different about that, and so on, be happy to get into it. Essentially, however, it was a position that we evolved out of trying to understand who keeps track of what's going on and how well things have been done. The second shift is uh, the shift that begins uh, usually after lunch, people coming in to uh, um, anywhere from, depending on exactly what time, 2, 30, 3, uh, you really can't clean buildings until some of the traffic calms down, although the way in which we use buildings, it's difficult. You have to almost clean around different uses. And that's why um, the custodial day is different from the, uh, obviously, the day that begins with bus drivers at uh, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we have a recommendation for a stipend um, the, uh, in your packet. That's a dollar and a half an hour. Um, we have looked at the total impact on the salary for that particular person. We've compared it to other salaries for supervisory personnel. We do feel that that is in line with what we're asking for responsibilities. Um, it is um, also a, an understanding that we will be reviewing that at the end of the year, not only for our job description, how well it's going, and how well it's it's um, <coughs> uh, you know how well that particular person is working out. Also, uh, right now I'm very pleased with the way that is going because it's giving us a much better handle on day-to-day, um, -day, or I might even say night-to-night -night problems. And also, uh, Sue continues to work directly with that person. The second issue I have in here is um, a little more complicated, and that is we have had in both middle school and high school a title that we've used rather loosely, maintenance supervisor or maintenance director. Um, and it's, it's been interesting to try to separate out what people are doing in a supervisory way with the kinds of responsibilities that nobody seems to actually have been able to do. I included in your packet a job description um, I gave you the job description that had been drawn up uh, a few years ago. Um, basically, that one, as I understand it, was not drawn up by the board or the superintendent. It was simply uh, 
in response to, I believe, the town manager's request, perhaps for, uh, as I understand it, insurance purposes to have job descriptions of all major uh, or stipended positions, um, that was basically an informal listing of the things that the person um, at that time called maintenance director was doing. Uh, so the attempt now is to really do a functional analysis, what do we need? And um, as, as you look at those two, the major difference is that I am suggesting that this district really needs to have somebody on board who has hands-on construction and maintenance experience. Uh, I've spent most of my life in schools and in small school systems it has typically been thought of as a luxury that we can't afford, um, that, that's a specialty item. Um, and that basically if somebody uh, is familiar with a building and has some idea of how to call the plumber and the electrician and so forth, we can keep going. I think one of the problems that we're seeing is that we have three large buildings. That is 90 square feet at the middle school, 90, 90 square feet, <laughs> 90,000. Um, the uh, almost double that at the uh, high school, even though Pond Cove is smaller, it's somewhs between 45 and 50,000 square feet. So you get into a lot of infrastructure things and heating and so on that are far more than what normal small house maintenance kinds of things would uh, uh, you really do need specialists and people who are quite familiar and comfortable with analyzing problems and coming up uh, with solutions furthermore as we indicated earlier in this meeting we are definitely facing anywhere from two to five years of major renovation major moving around major dealing with construction uh, in one phase or another and I believe it would be extremely helpful to the principals and certainly to the educational program to have somebody who has a well-grounded background in construction and in code work and in those kinds of uh, hands-on things. In our reorganization, we have moved to a point where we are, we frankly have been able to affect some savings uh, in that um, uh, general area. And um, I am suggesting that it would be prudent for us to use that some and to create a salaried position that I would be able to um, advertise for um, sometime around the uh, upcoming holiday break. Uh, go ahead to uh, put in place so that it's about a six month position. I do anticipate given the staff we have in this uh, support uh, section that we have some people that I know are getting near retirement age. Um, I believe that we can uh, reassign people uh, I'm not talking about uh, dropping somebody at this point in order to make room for that, but I would be well aware that as we have retirements, uh, the next position would not be refilled. It would be an attrition position and we would reassign the people we have. That way, we, although it, temporarily it's an additional position, it would be absorbed into our general workforce. Uh, so it is my strong recommendation that you go with both of those uh, pieces, the stipend for the head custodian and to the establishment of a um, new position. Can you kind of give us a, a listing of what will be in place when we have, if we approve this, as far as um, for supervisory, for positions. Su supervisory positions and maintenance and, right. and transportation? We are currently paying a stipend to our transportation um, supervisor. It is a salary. Uh, right now what we have are, are three people who work under an hourly rate and who are also paid a stipend. The one that's in here is a head custodian. That is a new um, position. We have had other positions um, in our, our uh, workforce with called head custodian but who do, who've had very um, unclear responsibilities. They're basically seen as somebody who'll fill in for the supervisor when he or, uh, well, I was going to say he or she, when he isn't there. Um, we haven't necessarily eliminated all of those. That is part of our reorganization. We're looking at those, whether we need those kinds of things. They are, however, fairly small stipends. The other thing we had was, uh, in a, and originally, uh, up till this year, actually, one of our, our men was considered the transportation supervisor, uh, the maintenance director for the middle school, and the maintenance director for uh, Pond Cove. That's all one person. And then we had a maintenance director for the high school. So in our reorganization, we have gradually 
uh, try to reorganize the maintenance director at the high school, becoming responsible as a maintenance director for middle school in Pond Cove also. Um, that left us with some problems because he also had some custodial supervisory um, responsibilities. Uh, we found that these are just, from a functional analysis, not working. And uh, we felt that it was important to have somebody who was really on top of custodial issues, and that's why we decided that head custodian is the position that the tags at, and that's the new one. As far as a maintenance director, um, the person who is currently filling that will, cont until we have a replacement, will continue doing those kinds of things, and then will be reassigned. Partially, some of what uh, what he is doing is is a kind of paperwork analysis. They continue doing. Um, there are simply things that aren't getting done. Is basically what I'm saying. We have not had the capacity to address the kinds of analysis, hands-on, and um, supervisory maintenance things because none of those people have that kind of background. Any other questions? Rosemary? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, when ready. Sure. Ready? Um, I move that we authorize the superintendent to establish the position of system-wide maintenance director and to achieve this through the reassignment of some of our current maintenance and custodial personnel and to establish the stipended position of head custodian second shift at a rate of $1.50 per hour to be, to be reviewed annually. I hear a second. Um, Jan, any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Anyone currently employed would, would be eligible to apply. Yes. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Women in that position? Oh, no, just as in general. Well, we have, we have women custodians. Yeah. Uh, we now move on to new business. Uh, the first is a discussion and action as needed to set a January workshop. Any suggestions? Hey, uh, About the coalition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other suggestions? Rosemary. Uh, just for the members of the public, could we refer to that as the Coalition of Essential, Essential schools? schools? There are three coalitions going around oh, right yeah. now that yeah. for right. fair That's funding like and for yeah. equal. Okay. Do we have a consensus that we want to continue discussion at the board level at a workshop? Okay. Then our we would have to set the date, and I believe we have a date anyway. <coughs> routinely in our schedule the fourth um, which would be um, the 26th of January which is a Tuesday our board meeting is on the 12th mm -hmm. would it be in the high school library fine with me it's right now we don't know whether this uh, probably this room is not uh, not available on, on that and that does seem to be certainly a logical place to hold it um, the, if, if by any chance at that point we had a very large turnout we could in fact move to the cafeteria as long as we have at least enough notice to know that we've, we we can look at the community services board to see if that would be available okay so we have set the next school board workshop for January 26 at 7:30, tentatively at the high school, and there will be a continual discussion on the coalition of essential schools. <coughs> we next move on to notification of annual election of the superintendent for state reports. Our annual duty. Anybody have any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> the superintendent might want to explain this process. It seems to be an archaic process that we have to go through every year. But this is the annual <laughs> archaic explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come up with anything more original than what I've said in the past. 
Uh, there is a state statute that requires school boards to take a vote in at their January, excuse me, their December meeting to indicate that they have um, a superintendent for that particular school year. Um, I have tested this from time to time, not done it, and only to get, I think that's last year we, we read it carefully and we said this is really kind of pro forma, why are we doing this? Because in fact, uh, actually uh, my contract is on a July 1 through June 30th basis and uh, the evaluation and discussion with the superintendent on, on the renewal of that contract would occur before um, that time. And uh, it could occur, you know, at this time if you wanted to. And some school boards do, in fact, kind of try to use this opportunity um, so that it doesn't seem like such a paper exercise. But um, essentially, <laughs> you're really basically letting the state know, yes, in fact, you do have a superintendent, and it is who it is. And uh, we'll fill out the form, and uh, the chairman signs it. And uh, that's that. We're just really fulfilling a state statute, which uh, I guess has some value, but I'm not exactly sure I know what it is. Well, I, I move we, uh, we nominate Connie to fulfill that uh, state statute <laughs> requirement of which, whose value of which we are unsure, but... Uh, not, not Connie's value, but... No, the no, the statute, statute. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Is that uh, adequately yeah. worded, uh, Charlie? Yes. That's fine Second. with me. Loretta seconds it. Any further discussion? Roseberry. I'm, are we nominating or electing? I uh, know you're not doing either. You're simply, uh, I, I forgot the operative verb there, but the operative verb, verb would be to um, signify. And we're communicating to the state that indeed we have a superintendent. Yes, that, that is in fact what that I, is. I alter my motion accordingly. Secretary has that. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, we next move on to nominations for co-curricular math positions for the 1992-93 school year. I defer to the superintendent. I'm looking for my sheet. I've got it here. Um, just as a point of clarification, uh, in our new teacher evaluation instrument where we established with job descriptions the um, team leader positions, the support uh, team people, and uh, we also had a position in there called, uh, well, we called it two or three different things, but essentially a curriculum leader. And the intent, if you look at that document, the intent is to um, make sure that we are giving at each grade level, um, as needed, somebody who's going to spend particular time working on that uh, area. Uh, this year we are mainly focusing on math at the elementary because that was uh, obviously we are adopting or adapting a new program. Uh, we are asking the teachers to spend a good bit of time conferring back and forth um, among the various grade levels and uh, I know for a fact that there are a lot of meetings going on so I think this is what we had in mind when we put that position in there. Um, Subject to final negotiations, the stipend for this is pretty modest considering the number of hours that I know that they're spending. Uh, it would be, um, well, what we suggested was the $500 for a year's work, which I think is uh, more in the nature of thanking people. It's not a, intended to be a per hour assignment. It is that kind of um, lump sum. So at the kindergarten is Gigi. Zimprich, Grade 1, Joe Warren, Grade 2, Dottie Anderson, and Grade 3, Ren Wilkinson. So do we have someone at Grade 4? Ah, uh, yes, I think so, don't we? No? Uh, the, in an implementation of the Chicago program, one of the recommendations was that math representatives in the grades that are participating in this pilot year be established. So in my proposal, I simply am identifying for you those folks who are spending enormous amounts of time getting the Chicago piece off the ground. One of our disappointments, if you remember, was in the spring when through the Beacon Schools we would have achieved uh, more of these math, we would have been able to identify more of these, these type of positions had we had that funding. But I felt that this would be a conservative effort uh, and something that was definitely needed. 
And so that's, that's why we're identifying simply K1, 2, and 3 at this point. That's not to say that we don't provide and have lots of conversations with fourth grade teachers, and in particular, Andrew Lomack McNair uh, comes to our regularly held meetings. Um, and we're in process of inviting special service folks have not identified or reimbursed them for that participation, but they, they are participating in our conversations about what's happening with Chicago Math for Kids. Did they meet with um, middle school and high school math um, coordinators? Or this re these representatives? Or have they? Is that one? They of have not at this point, but what has been happening and is we're in process of, of doing at this point, Charlie, is Charlotte Hanna, the middle school math coordinator, is taking time to come over and speak with each grade level at the elementary school about expectations for youngsters as they move up through the upper grades. So we are having those kinds of conversations. And we will, again, be inviting Charlotte if our schedules, we're having a tough time meeting schedules. When we have shared personnel, that, that becomes problematic. But we've invited Charlotte, and she's been very gracious and has been coming over and meeting with me on a regular basis. And then I share information with this group of people. We have not branched out and haven't approached the high school as yet, but. But you are making contact with yes, the next level? Yes, yes, okay. definitely. As long as we're looking at everything from a system-wide approach. And yeah, Anne. It does seem to me uh, that it would be appropriate to have someone from fourth grade um, have have a position similar to to this, just because I think, um, you know, if he's attending the meetings anyway, I I, I would hope that the issues of tra transitioning third graders into the fourth grade, Addison Wesley, are being addressed. I would I would imagine that would take some conversation for that to be done smoothly, um, and it seems to me it would be appropriate for that position to to be in here. Also. Well, I'd be very happy to make that proposal. One of the, um, I was in this proposal being very conservative, but had hoped to address this through some budgetary uh, conversations as we're approaching that, that season. The fourth grade teachers are coming forward and in are in process of making proposals for summer work in looking at meshing what's happening for youngsters in the third grade, having conversations with parents in the spring about what parents might expect as youngsters move into the fourth grade because many of our parents are unaware of fourth grade curriculum, not having had fourth, fourth grade in the building, and particularly uh, are interested in the math piece. Uh, Rosemary. Um, I would like to further support that since uh, in the finance committee meeting today, we in fact reviewed stipended co-curricular um, positions. I think that the grade four position, uh, if you do have someone serving in that um, position, whether official mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. that we ought to honor that and include that and ask that, um, as we will with any other uh, position, ask for an accounting of the responsibilities of the position and the time commitment so that we can budget appropriately in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, if, I, I was concerned that we didn't have a grade four uh, I'd be very happy to make that proposal, and I'd like to carry it a step further. There is one other piece that I, uh, a person or a group of folks that are not represented. I believe special service folks need to be included in that if we're making this proposal to be carried, extended further. Um, it's critical that they have an understanding of what program, what's going on for kids in classrooms, and how that their understanding needs to be translated for, for youngsters. So I, I'd like to, if you're, if you're uh, uh, of a mind to receive that, I'd certainly be willing to make those proposals to you. I would <coughs> concur with both Rosemary and Anne that I feel the transitioning is in fourth grade is as important as kindergarten to first grade. And I think it's even more important that that transitioning from third to fourth be there because I can see, you know, we already have started sixth, seventh, and eighth with with parts of the of the Chicago program, and eventually it's going to be in, encompass the fourth and fifth. And I think it's important. 
that those fourth grade yes. teachers know what's happening at both first, second, and third. So I think the fourth is, is as important as the kindergarten representatives. Well, I'd, I'd certainly agree. One of the, one of the things that, um, documents that I'll be getting to you within the next week is a summary of, and it is basically bare bones, but it is a summary of some specific feedback of a workshop that we held last week, which centered on just those kinds of conversations. Uh, we began um, the workshop with an overview of what's happening with the Chicago Math Program, then broke down into small group and asked teachers to give feedback to each other in terms of, uh, of what's good about the program, what do they see that's working with the program, and where do we ma need to make some adjustments. And I am in process of assimilating all of that information, and I'd be very happy to share that with you. Specific feedback from teachers, uh, which includes their experiences with kids and um, conversations that they've had with parents. The other piece that I think was really quite important, and uh, Connie joined us for, for, for some of these conversations, we further broke down the group so that kindergarten teachers had opportunities to talk with first grade teachers about that transitioning piece that you're referring to. That second, third, and fourth grade teachers sat and <coughs> talked about those kinds of issues, transitioning, how do we make that, that happen for youngsters. <coughs> fourth grade teachers took part in that so that they could hear the conversations share the materials and in the spring we're proposing four workshops where teachers will continue to immerse themselves in Chicago materials, continue to have the conversations about the transitions and hopefully uh, have a transition evening where parents will be able to specifically ask questions, hear about the programs, talk firsthand with the teachers and, and keep I think we've really spent and invested an enormous amount of time in, att in attempting to keep parents aware of, of what's happening for kids in the mathematics program. Um, so those conversations are ongoing. And I, I appreciate your, your willingness to urge us to continue to do that. Yeah. So are these positions that would be, these are just for this year? the need for them, I assume. These are one-year positions, that's right. Looked at again next year. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we have a motion. We don't have a motion yet. Um, entertain a motion. Rosemary? Can I ask a question yes. of the superintendent? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are we able tonight to authorize uh, or to approve this list as read and then to authorize a grade four position to be filled or? I think you've already indicated that you would entertain a proposal. I think, uh, frankly, the uh, administration needs to go back to the building and discuss specifics. Uh, I mean, I don't think we're gonna, you're not asking me if we're gonna add somebody tonight to this list. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, in the motion, we vote to approve the math representatives as stated for kindergarten grade one, two, three. But then I wanted to know if we further state to authorize the principal, or is that just done? I think that we got the message. <laughs> okay. We'll be happy to to reconsider or to bring back in an expanded proposal. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the additional co-curricular assignments for the 1992-93 school year for math representatives Pond Cove School, do dated I, December 8th, 92. Do I hear a second? Ann? Any further discussion? All the and um, just if if you're planning to come back with special services, also, I guess I would like to see the reasons. I mean, the grade level representatives are you know very obvious to me, but in terms of of why you think there should be a special services person, I guess I'd want more information about that. Not not necessarily tonight, but if you're if right. you're going to come back, I'd be that. happy to provide that as well as a, a description of of what it is that these folks are involved in doing. You, you speak of that as plural. Are there, are you thinking of, of more than one special service person? No. One. Right. I'd be very happy to have one. Yeah. Peter? I have a question. Should the motion uh, contain any uh, reference to negotiations? No. I mean, we've been appointing people 
um, all fall. And in fact, the uh, we have a standard contract form for stipend and positions that we just have been marking, subject to negotiations. Has this stipend level that's uh, been mentioned been discussed with uh, uh, it was the association? As, well, we discussed it as part of that process we used last year. I mean, we, some of us uh, in the subcommittee format. Uh, did in fact discuss that. I don't know where that is. You'd have to tell me as far as your, you know, your basic negotiations format, whether you've reached that particular point or not. Uh, I think we have uh, in principle. Uh, however, I can't recall whether or not uh, these are additional positions, aren't they? Right. These are positions so that you established. The board establishes additional stipended positions. You establish them as part of the adoption of the teacher evaluation revised plan that included those positions. And by adopting that plan, you also concurrently adopted as a board these positions. However, although it's the board prerogative to adopt the position, any salary stipend, or any stipend for that matter, which is a money issue, is subject to negotiation. So how we've, we've been dealing with all of this with estimated figures or suggested figures, and since the, f the figure that I mentioned was was uh, arrived at in a teacher uh, administrative discussion format, I would suspect that that's the one that will ultimately go. But I, at the I same time, we mark it for negotiations. Okay, I, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think we're we're <coughs> uh, approving positions, but we haven't approved what they're going to get paid. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, we next move on to the first reading of a policy. And it is the first reading of the Cables of the School Department Hazardous Hazard Communication Policy. Thank you. Communications are hazardous to your health. <laughs> Some communications are more hazardous than others. Um, this is a piece of work that, uh, frankly, our chemistry teacher, Pat Monterio, uh, also um, has accepted the responsibility for working with some of these issues that have become more and more mandated by both state and federal forms. Um, and frankly, if you've had a chance to look this through, a lot of the, the language is sort of what we call boilerplate, that is, she's taking it out of recommended uh, forms that come to us from uh, those um, Bureau of Labor Standards or whatever particular bureau is in charge of um, chemical hazards. Uh, there's been a good deal of this, and I think you probably heard about it a little bit in the last few years. Uh, you know, in chem labs, we were, uh, it was pretty um, interesting to have people go into old closets and find chemistry or chemicals that, you know, Lord knows how old they were or exactly what they were. And uh, fortunately, by now, we have gotten, we, like a lot of other districts, uh, have been um, uh, first encouraged and then mandated to clean out those clauses, to label things, to go through the uh, disposal process and so on. So we are beyond that. Um, but the next step in that is what is outlined in this policy, and that is we must tell the public where certain material uh, product sheets are kept um, when we buy chemicals now whether they are chemicals that come to us for custodial work or classroom work they all come now with data sheets and those have to be kept and we have to give public notice of where those data sheets are available I did ask um, Ms. Monterio if we were required to have a policy that actually said room 319 and room 209 and so on because it seemed to me that was going to make the policy out of date pretty quickly. Um, she said we are required to be very specific. Um, we may figure some way around that that's a little more, uh, a little less cumbersome than amending policies, but for the time being, we'll go with it. Um, the piece in here about employee information and training, um, one of the things that we talk about administratively in the summer is do what kind of vehicle to get some of this information out to all staff uh, should we be using. We talk about, uh, you know, uh, teacher handbooks or custodial fact sheets. And um, right now we have a, a quite a list of things. And what we've been trying to do is to put together a folder for all new hires that includes not only basic things like health information or benefits information, but also copies of policies such as this one 
that we ask people to read and be aware of. We put our sexual harassment policy, for instance, which we required now by law to make sure that we have informed all new hires and everybody up periodically on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, it, frankly, the list has gotten kind of long. <laughs> and in some cases, the language in these policies is somewhat repetitive. The same kind of thing for uh, asbestos, you know, the, uh, this one does mention asbestos that we have to tag anything that's been encapsulated. Um, includes asbestos and so on. Uh, so it, it looks kind of cumbersome, but I think that as we move down the road and we're getting, we are making some efforts to, to um, put the stuff together so that it's available. We don't have to have, you know, five different training sessions that you have a training session or you have uh, something that's kind of commonsensical to make, make sure people understand. The intent behind this, however, I think is, is uh, certainly clear. Um, and you see it in packaging all over the place. People are now <coughs> being told that this is hazardous material. And if you're using it, you should use it according to the ways in which um, that kind, you should be inhaling it, for instance, or you should wear a mask, or you should wear gloves. Um, and I think this is all a very uh, positive trend. It just is kind of hard to manage. And it, if you read this through and then read through some of the other uh, policies on this, it looks pretty cumbersome, but that is part of our reorganization through this um, maintenance custodial uh, processes. Uh, we will get better at pulling it all together so that it is available and doesn't look quite so overwhelming. How do you plan to review this with the staff every year? Well, right now what we're doing is making sure that copies of the, um, the, the policies that are mandated are included in new hire packets. And we talked administratively this year about being sure we had a list of things in, in separate policies that we asked principals to share with um, staff on the first day of school, which is one of the ideal times to get people's attention. You know, here's a list of things. Uh, here's a list of the, you know, sort of the pointers you need to remember and be reminded about with these things. Um, in some cases, uh, when they're new, we, we have, uh, um, we're supposed to have training sessions with the custodians. That's more to the point than it is for the teachers. On the other hand, the teachers who are handling the chemicals certainly need some training. There are some effective films out there, video films. Having, being in, being a laboratory scientist, I have to sit through those every year. So I'm aware they are quite dry, but they are getting better and better as, as uh, um, these uh, governing agencies monitor these things more closely. So we might want to look into the That's that a of making point. that a mandatory yeah. that, are, that all staff view this these resources once a year. Well, I, I've certainly seen some some things and had my consciousness raised about some of this. So I certainly don't want to even remotely imply that I take it lightly. I really don't. The difficulty for us is how do we do it? You know, how do we do it efficiently? Because some uh, employees may not think they need it at all, and six months later down the road, they happen to be dealing with a solvent that they may not have realized was a problem, and you know the training may not even you know how it is. If you don't think you're going to need it, you may not be paying attention. Those are some of the issues we've talked about. But do we have any kind of chemical safety officer, or someone who's primarily responsible? Well, we have been using our chemistry department head, I believe, D, over the last few years, and Pat is, is it right now. I mean, she's our uh, chemistry, main chemistry teacher. Um, that's not necessarily, you know, something we, we have to stay with, but she's been good enough to continue in that capacity. Well, we figure we want somebody who really understands the chemical nature that we're talking about. My, my concern would be someone to monitor this policy every year to make sure that the specific notification notation of where these MSDA sheets are are kept current and right. that's been a problem with a lot of our policies that there's no one you know right. they haven't been right. annual reviews this would not be one that I would expect the policy subcommittee to always have to review if we had someone right. who was designated as a chemical safety officer for the system my sense is that um, we really have two separate issues here one is the classroom teacher situation and probably asking our high school chemistry people to uh, continue to take some responsibility, uh, although I understand and have talked to um, people at the middle school level to the degree that they use them, um, it, to, you know, to contact other teachers who may be using chemicals. Um, probably from a practical point of view, the larger issue is the custodial 
um, issue. That really is a whole range of chemicals that we need to be aware of. And um, in our reorganization, uh, I suspect this is this is certainly one of the things that I would expect um, our new maintenance person. That's one of the things I'm looking for is somebody who has that kind of organizational ability and that kind of understanding how important it is to have these things well tagged, be on top of them, and to be training people, not just in the specific issues that are here, uh, but in related issues. Uh, I mean, another <coughs> very important issue for us is training our custodians in uh, handling um, body waste, um, health issues, um, et cetera. Um, not a chemical hazard, but we've had to, we've really had to rethink a lot of the routine ways in which we do things. So that's where I would expect a, um, a developing sense of responsibility. Just the, the record keeping of keeping the MSDA sheets up to date, uh, making sure that those chemicals are so labeled with the appropriate labeling. Right. And there are about three different labels that have to go on every chemical. Right. So right. The, that I, I like your idea of using the maintenance. I think that is, um, practically speaking, that is where um, a good, that's a good control center. Um, because we really have those two strands. I mean, the, the classroom issues, we need to have classroom teachers involved in that, but they really cannot branch out effectively into the whole range of stuff that we get into in maintenance and custodian. This is Rosemary. I, I just had a couple of comments. Sure. Um, I understand that this is boilerplate, and I was just wondering if perhaps in a couple of areas we could um, fine tune it a little to the Cape Elizabeth School Department's functioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, under material safety data sheets, uh, paragraph four, the Cape Elizabeth School Department will also keep on file at the superintendent's office a material safety data sheet for all hazardous chemicals used in the school system. Um, I was just wondering if we should also consider adding uh, and community services. And in the second paragraph, um, I'm concerned about the omission of the pool chemicals. In the second paragraph? Yes. Hazardous chemicals used by the kitchen and custodial staff will be located at the office of the maintenance director. And so you want to add the kitchen, used by the kitchen custodian and pool? I, I think that's where it belongs, but I could be wrong. You want all the hazardous chemicals in the, in the pool area? No, I just want to know where the list will be okay. of, okay. because we have omitted, we're silent on the chemicals used in the pool in this policy from what I can see. And that's where most of them are, besides the chemistry lab. Oh, there's okay. all kinds of, I mean, every cleaner that comes in, every, I mean, even um, ditto fluid, for heaven's sake, because, you know, you have to store it right and understand and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's an enormous list. Sorry, I, I, <laughs> it really I was just thinking of the big drums of the oh, those stuff that goes things, yeah, into sure. the pool is, real obvious to me but I think you need to clarify that that last sentence to include the material safety data sheets as you have with every other okay. reference uh, I, that's what I was asking hazardous chemicals used by the kitchen will because there's no reference to the uh, MSD right. I'm having a problem yeah. with that so because you've referenced it to the MSDA sheets and every other okay aspect. I think that must mean because if you notice, no I understand but, right okay. but each um, Each specific area references the MSDA okay. sheet, just to clarify. It's not simplifying like Rosemary wants it, but it's clarifying. Okay. And then my last comment on the last paragraph, it says the school department will as a matter of policy in all contracts with outside contractors, etc. I would just like to know who within the school department and if the policy should state, not by name but by position, who within the school department would be responsible for doing that? Well, the usual um, the way in which that works, of course, is the maintenance director is responsible for uh, direct contact with contractors. And we, frankly, this is also, um, and asbestos is mentioned in here, but um, we probably, I'm sure we have as part of our HERA plan a whole list of things that are tagged for asbestos. You can't hire somebody 
without taking them into the space and telling them where there's asbestos and what kind and so on. Um, and that is certainly seen as part of the job of the maintenance director. Now, uh, as far as would there be anybody else who would be involved under some circumstances, might it be the head custodian, might it be the um, principal? I think that's a matter of practical um, internal making sure we have a good workflow there and we understand who is responsible. Ultimately, it is the school department that's responsible. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This is a first reading. Yes. And if you have any other comments, please send them on to the policy subcommittee, care of Loretta Pond or Jan Solon or Peter Leslie. Very good. Okay. Our last item of business is to consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purposes of discussing a personnel issue and negotiations. Before that, I want to um, <coughs> announce dates to remember. Um, the, on December 10th at 7.30, a joint workshop with the town council. On Wednesday, January 6, 1993, at 9.30 a.m. in the superintendent's office, the policy subcommittee will be meeting. On Tuesday, January 12, 1993, at 6.30 p.m., the finance subcommittee will meet in the superintendent's conference room, and at 7.30 p.m., the board will meet for its regular January meeting in council chambers and on January 26th. January 26th, we will meet for a school board workshop on the Coalition of Essential Schools at 7.30, tentatively in the high school library. Now I will entertain the motion. Rosemary. Do I hear a second? Loretta, all those in favor? 7-0.